Well, hello. Good morning. Welcome back. I'm Claire. This is Purple Poppy. And today I am making journal cover toppers from book pages. So from book page to a journal cover topper. Okay. I did put a picture of these in the Facebook group earlier. Um, just to give a heads up of the video that I would be doing today. So all you really need for this is some book page. If you're anything like me, you've got lots of book pages that you can use. You need some fabrics, some laces, trims and a focal point. Now I've pulled out some photographs. I've got a bit of a bingo card that comes out of an embossing folder. I've got some of these uh, first day cover stamps and I've got some of these bookmarks. So we might be able to use one of those or something. So without further ado, as they say, let's make a start. Now I'm going to try and do two today because I'm conscious that not everybody has a supply of random fabrics. So I'm going to show you a way to do it with papers as well. Okay, so this is a large book, larger than normal book, which is ideal for what we're doing. And if I just pull out, this is a journal pad if you like. I've coffee dyed and sewn together the pages and the reason I've bought this is just so that I can see what size that I want this page to be and I have found because I've used this book a few times that what I need to do is tear it on the top line and then tear off one of the blank sides so so it looks like that I've lost the top on one blank side and now because this is the optimum journal size for me which is an A4 that's been folded in half you can see that that fits on there perfectly bearing in mind obviously my cover will be marginally larger so it's a perfect topper size okay obviously if you like to work on smaller journals then you would tear your page appropriately I'm using now this is a three in one tube but it's not three in one glue I'm dreadful for swapping my glues around it's actually this Kalau glue now I've used Fabri-Tac let's just do glues for a minute I've used Fabri-Tac and I've used three in one both made by Beacon now they're brilliant glues I love them to pieces but they are very very expensive and I came across this and from reading the ingredients and the usage it seemed to me to be the same glue but in a different brand it is slightly different because it smells different so from my day job I know that means it's got different ingredients in it but I have found that it works just as well I've also found that it's thinner can you I don't know if you can see that moving it's much thinner than three in one or beacon and that might explain why it's a lot cheaper because this 118 ml bottle of three in one is around eight pounds whereas this 500 ml kalau is also around eight pounds so as you can see i'm getting four times which means a bottle of this kalau this size is actually only about two pounds so i thought i would buy some and give it a go and so far i can't find a problem with it it grabs well it does take a little while to grab whereas sometimes you find that fabric tech is quite instant but you know anyway i'm going to get some fabric scissors 
and I have got four different pieces of fabric okay you will see that on both of these I used one two three four different pieces of fabric on this one I've used the goldy green to try and pick up the goldy green in the background and likewise with this bluey green and I think that matched quite well and then I've used the navy um, ticking type fabric to go with the dark uh, bookmark there and in this one again one two three four fabrics because this is the same as this and then obviously the laces and things on top so again I've got four different fabrics I've chosen ones which for me blend well together I've got this grey and you'll see they're all completely screwed up, screwed up and torn and tatty and to me that helps the look I've got this, what I'm calling Christmas green. I've then got this sort of pillar boxy red. And then I've got this Christmas velvet red, okay? So I'm gonna start with this red. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come all the way down this side. So I'm gonna snip and tear so that it is marginally over the height of the book or oh, the book page i'll show you so look it's marginally longer okay i'm gonna get that green thread off you could obviously use it narrower if you wanted to but i'm going to use the whole amount I'm leaving quite a few of these straggly bits on because I think it adds to the effect. And I'm going to take my glue, and obviously any good strong glue, and I'm just going to do a zigzag line top to bottom. And then I'm going to come close to that edge at the top, at the bottom and the side, and then down there. Okay? Like that. Pop my lid on. And then I'm turning it sideward just so I find it easier to work with. And I'm just going to plop this down. And then I'm going to drag it and press. Okay? And I'm going to drag and press. Drag and press. So I'm creating all these sort of um, waves of fabric, for want of a better word. Okay? And then I'm just going to trim that one because I don't want that bit on there. And I'm going to trim. For some reason, these scissors don't want to trim. Okay, so that's that piece. Then I'm going to take the green and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to get it, and you can see this is much narrower than the other piece. Um, so, obviously that will make it slightly different. And all we need to do is make sure that we come all the way across, okay? So again, I'm turning it on its side just because I find that easier. And I'm actually now going to run my glow along the side of that red bit and where we pulled it up at the bottom there. I'm not actually putting glue on the red fabric, only on the book page. And again, I'm gonna pop it down and I'm gonna drag and press, drag and press, drag and press, and drag and press. Okay, now I'm gonna take the gray see this is not rocket science this is just gluing screwed up fabric to a piece of paper really you know it's it's not hard um i just love that you've got toppers ready made and that obviously you can advance these to suit yourself so plopping that down and this time I'm going from the bottom all 
Oh, we've got a little bit of paper showing there. And just press that down onto our paper. Now you can see it has come through a little bit there. I'm not overly worried about that because I'm going to be putting stuff on top. And then little bits like that, I'm just going to press down. Okay. Just hold that. Whoops. It's gluing to me now. That's not good, is it? Okay, so I've got my three colours. Okay. And then I am going to trim up a piece of this velvet. Whoops. That's because it's velvet, all the strands have come off. And I want to get like a little bit, give it a shake, a little bit of a like rosette going across here like this. And I want to put that under it. Okay. So tear that off. Pull that out like so and now I'm actually going to glue the back of the fabric so I'm just going to put some little dobbles of glue across this okay we've now got some stuck to the glue bottle let's sort that out in a minute and I'm just going to grab that across there like that now, the next thing you need to decide is whether this is the top and this is the bottom, or whether you're actually now going to turn it round. I'm actually going to leave mine, and now you need to decide what your focal points are going to be. Now, I'm thinking, because this I've called this like Christmas red and Christmas green, that I am going to use a photograph, um, a photograph that's got a Christmas image on it. Okay, so I'm going to use my tear ruler and I'm just going to run down the side, across the bottom, up the other side, and across the top. Get rid of those pieces. I'm going to get a little bit of ink and I'm just going to come down the sides just to cover up the you know it's printed on white paper and that you've got those white edges. Give it a little bit of age. Okay. And I'm very probably going to offer that about there in the centre. But obviously on its own like that, it doesn't look overly exciting. So I'm going to use some of this lace. Now I think I might have a piece that runs across there. So that's going to be two scallops as it were. So that will run across there like so. I've got an odd little one here. Now, you can see here that we've got overhang. So, we could maybe, and also it looks a little bit like a snowflake. So, I might have that one there. That is one that's been cut out from this piece here. I've just cut the individual snowflakes. So, I think we could maybe have another couple of these just trim them out on the connecting points um, I think all too often we use the whole piece of fabric rather than maybe looking at pulling out component parts so maybe two snowflakes coming out there get rid of all this out of the way and then this is a slightly different one so we could maybe have a different snowflake here and also of course by trimming these out 
and just using one or two at a time your lace trims do last very oh didn't trim that one properly very much longer because you're using such a tiny amount so maybe that one or maybe there like so and then I'm maybe going to use a piece of this underneath it so I'm going to trim that off about there like so so the first thing I want to do is I want to get my snowflakes on I want to make sure they're in the right places so I'm going to glue round the most compact part of the little rosette snowflake which is that middle bit and just push in down like that also it means the sides will obviously lift which adds for more dimension and more interest and then oh, I've got glue all over me do the same thing on this one round that more dense area pick that up and I'm going to pop that about there okay I'm going to hold off putting that one on for a moment I'm going to put my bottom lace down so again always on the compact area so that central that piece there that area on that bottom sort of frilly area there and then across that top bit there okay and then I'm going to pick it up and I'm just going to position it where I want it and press that down home okay it will stick just give it a little minute to catch and then this piece I'm actually going to glue to the back of my picture like so so I'm going to glue the picture this time whoops drop the glue and I'm just going to position that like that maybe not throw it off the table and then just put some glue on these little stitch points like so and then I'm going to offer that about there okay and then I'm going to use this last snowflake to just pin on top of that picture and into the snowflakes there okay onto the snowflakes there and pop that just in there like that and then I'm going to put a tiny little dab on the picture there and just pin that snowflake to it now if you feel that it's too lumpy and bumpy you can always run a little bit of glue under and just hold it down and that will then take one or two of your lumps and bumps out and then <clears throat> I will put a title along here um, or maybe even some bling because it is Christmas after all so I mean I've got a little die that does merry so I could maybe do Merry Christmas there on a piece of solid fabric but before we do that I'm going to pop in a little bit of bling so I think I'm going to do the whole length so I'm going to go there I'll just cut my finger that's how sharp those scissors are look I've just cut my finger um, and then I'm going to oh I don't want to bleed on everything do I um, trusty sellotape because I don't want to bleed on everything so put a little bit of sellotape around that that will stop me bleeding on my work
I don't recommend this. Um, if you cut yourself, please find yourself a plaster. <laughs> don't use sellotape. Um, my children would laugh. I've spent years using sellotape instead of plastic on a cut. I suppose that comes from having spent a number of years in a stained glass business where you would cut yourself daily. Right, so I did cut that long strip, but then I just cut one off of the strip and I'm just going to do a little line of glue across that picture and then I'm going to offer up my bling onto the edge of that picture and that just wakes that up a little bit doesn't it makes it a little bit more blingy it's lovely so that's number one and obviously as i say you can put a word or a title there if these scraggly bits bother you then obviously go around and trim them off i like them but i know a lot of people don't and like that bit there if you feel that's sticking out too far for you then just put a little tiny bit of glue and just poke it in. You know, we've got lots of lumps and bumps. Oops. But don't stick it to your finger. We've got lots of lumps and bumps going on here. So that sort of makes sense. You may not want it sticking out quite so far. So you may want to just bring it back and stick it down like so I'm just going to use this for a minute because it's sticking to my finger there we go and obviously I, I'm just picking off those bits of extra red thread that came from that velvet and there is number one okay so that's what I did with all the fabrics now, if you want to do one, but you don't have lots of fabrics, or you just prefer the look of paper, then you can do exactly the same thing with paper. So I'm going to trim off my top. We know the size we want now. Move that across a little bit. I'm going to trim off the top. I'm going to trim off that one side. Okay. like so and then I've got four different types of paper so I've got this one I've got this one I've got this one and these three are all packaging papers that are round things that you buy from places like Amazon and then this is some dress pattern this one okay so I'm going to start with this one so I'm going to unravel it like so okay I'm going to tear it down there and then I'm going to screw it up completely get lots of to get the creases in that we had in the fabric lots of lovely creases and then I'm going to open it back out and I'm going to do exactly what I did with the fabric, only this time I'm doing it with paper. Okay. So, put that down and rinse this. Obviously it's a little bit stiffer than the fabric, but it will work in exactly the same way. Okay, then I'm going to take the next one. I'm going to use this white paper. Pull that bit off. And I'm going to put that down there. Now this time, because it's paper, not fabric, I will glue on the paper that I've just put down as well as on the book page okay and then I'm just gonna put this piece I'm 
them exactly the same way and if you feel it's lifting up too far for your liking then just put a dob of glue underneath and press it down okay and just press all that home then I'm going to take the other brown piece Totally different to that one. So I'm going to tear off a piece about that big. Yep, I'm going to screw it up like so. Open it back out. And I'm going to put that across that top. So, glue in here. But I'm only doing the top because I'm going to use my fourth paper on the bottom so like so now I can see that that is sticking out much too far for my liking so I'm going to put my ruler down and I'm going to tear off some of this excess like so okay that's better I'm going to check the bottom again I think that's just a tiddly bit too much so I'm going to tear some of that off and also down this side I'm going to Tear off a bit more. Okay, so there we go. That's that one. Get rid of those pieces because they're now rubbish. And then I'm going to take some of this sewing pattern and I'm just going to tear that down there like that. And again, I'm going to screw it up. This is very soft tissue paper. So obviously that will open out much softer than this one. And I can see I've got much too much now for what I want. So I'm just tearing off the extra pieces. And I'm going to pop that down there like that. So again glue there, glue on this bit of paper and then on our background book page okay and I'm just gonna scrumple and press it down get rid of that bit we don't need that bit scrumple it press it down like so okay Again, I'm going to put my roller on the back and I'm going to tear off that extra bit that we don't need and I'm quite happy I think with that obviously if you're a person that requires um, measurements and things to be neat and tidy this is not going to be a project for you this is about messiness uh, grungy looking so let's have a look do I want the bingo card I might do but I think that's too big so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tear it down there like that and I'm gonna pop that bit there um, I'm not sure that I want to photograph this time. Let's have a look what we've got in these bookmarks. Um, we've got a nice postage one there. That might work quite nicely, although it's quite green. This might work nice, although you see, because of the photography, I'm going to be tempted to put... Um, 
another photograph there which I'm not sure I want to do I do like this one though with the flower there you go so we're going to use that one so that is going to be my anchor point let's have a look in these um, stamps and see what we've got in here these were a gift from my mum she had a visit round some of the charity shops I feel like maybe that's too big for this and they've actually obviously got the stamp that corresponds with the picture which is quite nice um, I think that's too big so I'm going to discard that going to go back to looking at my my flower I like that and I'm wondering have that on the angle we could maybe have the bingo card coming out there like that and then we need something for the bottom area see and I'm back into oh I've got a photograph here now I feel like she belongs with that but I don't feel like she belongs with the bingo card so I think I'm going to use that and her and then I need something underneath and I feel like it should be something florally uh, because of this flower I'm just trying to think what have I maybe got local um, that we could use for that um, do, 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 do. I'm just something up there Ooh, I know it's not floral. Oh, but I, look, and Jessie's dreams, I like that. Right, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to pull off the title piece, like so, because we can use that as a heading. I'm going to look at how this works. Um... So I want to try and get some of the music. Hmm. Right, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go for it. So pull that piece off like so. I'm going to pull off the excess that we don't require. Okay. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on there and I'm going to put that one there, which means I need to cut that off about there. So I'm going to pull that off. Let's bring this back and see where we're at. Because I'm thinking if that goes on there, that and then that sits there, we have got a nice little cover then, haven't we? Yeah. But what I also think I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of card behind this because I don't want um, I don't want the crumple look so I'm going to take a piece of board like so This is football, it's 
Oh, it's so thick. Okay, I'm gonna. You can use any cardboard. I'm going to mount that on there, like so, but I'm going to mount it just off, so we get that tattiness, okay, so, because you know me, I'm the queen of tat, don't do organised, I like messy, and angles rather than straight, and so on and so forth okay so that's stuck that on there like that i'm going to take a bit of ink move my work <clears throat> bit of ink whoops and i'm going to get all the way down the edge like that give it a really good ink up just because it's another layer and another dimension in what we're doing like so okay and then I'm gonna bring this across like that so the only sort of is in the middle it overhangs that's what I want so I'm gonna overhang it like that okay and then this is just a photograph that I've already put some of those miniature doily snowflake things on whoops and I'm gonna set this down and over like so and now we've got some rigidity and I'm gonna pop that just make sure where your paper edges are for where you're positioning it and I'm gonna pop that about there so let's glue this up Obviously, we've got all these overhanging bits. We're not worried about that. That's our dimension. So I'm going to put that. Right, so you now I don't want it straight. So I'm going to put it slightly off that way. And then I'm going to turn it over press it home I'm sorry if I've jogged the camera it's because I'm pressing on the table there you go you might want to put a little bit of glue under your snowflakey doilies you might want to leave them flappy and the thing is that this is now slightly raised so there are spaces where if you wanted to you could tuck that underneath you know or a ticket or something because you've got space to add additions maybe under there whatever but I'm going to leave mine like that the only thing I want to do is I want I'm sorry about the child screaming the only thing that I want to do is I want to put my title on so I'm gonna put my Jessie's dream title up the top so I'm just tearing it off a little bit thinner okay gonna give it a little bit of ink just around the edges remember this was just the title page of that music okay and then I'm going to pop a little bit of glue on there. Now you may choose to put a little bit of cheesecloth or something underneath. I don't know. Oh yes I have. Look. Just here. I've got a bit of cheesecloth. Which is handy. So I'm just going to trim. 
trim that across there and add the cheesecloth like so and then I'm just gonna pop that there so I'm gonna put a little bit more glue just to make sure that's gonna stick and that all the glue hasn't got lost with the cheesecloth there we go so from book page let's put it underneath from book page to a journal cover topper hope you enjoyed that giving you some inspiration some ideas stay safe happy crafting i'll see you all again soon bye for now